Hi, so this is the A2 Sequences and Series 2024 pack. Um, so it's slightly updated. So we'll kind of do a little bit of re record on this pack. I think it's been made into more lessons, five instead of four. Right, so let's have a look at the first lesson then. So this is some information which can be found on the formula sheet. Um, so we've got information about, so we've got defining a sequence, maybe given as UN in terms of N or UN plus one. So we'll talk more about these later. But the subscript is its position in the list. So then we've got increasing, decreasing, and periodic ones. So increasing is where the next term, UN plus one, is bigger than the previous one. Decreasing is when the next term is smaller than the previous one. And periodic means it kind of every so often repeats itself. So we've got some series notation. So the sigma, this sign here, which means sum of. I tend to ignore the sigma and we just use, or I just use the S with whatever the subscript is that goes with it. So then we've got arithmetic, which is where you add on, geometric, which is where you multiply, and then we've got a uh, sum to infinity, which is this equation, but it only works if R is between plus or minus one because the R value's got to be. We've got some limits here, so eventually the term stays the same and we call that a limit. Uh, and then this is the start of our lesson one. So we just thought it's a bit of a summary there. Okay. So it tells us that a sequence is a list of numbers called terms. Uh, so the first term is U1. So you know it's a subscript tells you where it is in the list. U2 is the second. U3 is the third. So the subscript is where it is in the list. So for this sequence, 3, 7, 15, 31, the first term is 3. Now we also call the first term A when we do arithmetic and geometry later. The second term is seven, and the third term is 15. Whenever I've got a question where you don't know the terms, I always generate the first three terms because that tells me what type of sequence it is. So it's quite nice seeing a question here that asks for the first three terms. So that's quite important for me. So now it says, a sequence can be defined as an expression for the nth term. So un is the nth term. So it says for this example, let's have a look at this example. So example one says write down the first three terms, the one, the 100th term. Right. So let's have a go here. Uh, so if n is one, the first term, then u1 is five lots of one and take two, so that's three. Uh, n is two, u2 is five lots of two take two, so that's eight. Do it over here. Uh, if n is three, u3 is five lots of three take two, so that's 13. It's pushing my uh, mental arithmetic now. And then for the hundredth term, n is a hundred. So u one hundred is five lots of a hundred take two, which is four nine eight. There. Cool. I thought Martin's pack said four nine seven, but his uh, his eight eight his eight's a bit squidged. Uh, right. So there's some u try ones for you to do. Um, if you have a go at it, I'll just quickly write down what they are. But please, you try it in full. So hopefully you kind of got those all right. Uh, 
let's keep going there. So we've got a problem solving question now. So it says the nth term of a sequence un is given by un is k to the n minus three. And we know that u1 plus u2 is equal to zero. So it says find two possible values of k. So let's find what u1 and u2 are first. So if n is one, u1 is k to the power one minus three. So it's just k minus three, isn't it? Do like a, a GCSE, do an equals across there. It's because I haven't got a lot of room. Also, we do that. Twitch when people do like 15 equals lines on the same. I just do that with k squared minus three. Okay. So now it tells us that u1 plus u2 is equal to zero. So k minus three plus k squared minus three is equal to zero. So if you look, you've got a nice poly there, haven't you? Uh, squeeze it in here. So my two possible values for k using poly is minus three or k is two. So that's part A done. Then part B says, for each value of k found in part A, find the corresponding value of u5. So I'm going to use n is 5 and k is minus 3. So u5 will be, let's have a look, minus 3 to the power 5 minus 3. And the Martin's pack says that that's minus 2, 4, 6. Then for n is 5 and k is 2, uh, it's going to be 32 take 3 is 29. There we go. So that's that bit done. Right, so let's move on to the next bit then. So it says a sequence can also be defined as an expression for the next term un plus one. So un is like the term you're on and un plus one is the next term. So this is called a recurrence relation or inductive. You tend to see recurrence, I guess, more than inductive. And that's certainly the word that I use. But the idea is you make the next one from the one you're already at. So it says write down the first four terms. So if u1 is 3, u2 is 5 lots of u1 minus 2. So u2 is 5 lots of 3 minus 2. So u2 is 13. Then u3 will be 5 lots of u2. So 5 lots of 13 take like 2. So u3 is going to be 63, is that right? Yeah, it must be. And then there was the first four terms. So u4 will be five lots of u3, 63 minus two. So u4 is going to be, what's that? 315 take two is 313. There we go. So that's that one done. That's quite nice. Well, the important thing is the next one is made from the one you're at. That makes sense. So it says MB, you can use the calculator answer key to generate the sequence. Right. So I can't pause it because I don't know how to. So let's just get the calculator up and we'll have a go at that question then. So I've got 5 UN minus 2. The first value is 3. So I go into menu 1. So I put my 3 in and press XE. And then, so I've entered my first term. And then I do 5 times that. Well, I put my equation in, but replace the UN with ANS and then minus 2. And then press answer. And that gives me the 13. Press answer gives me 63. Press answer gives me the 330. And then I can just get 
There we go. So I've done that now. That's good. Right then, so back to this. Um, so we've got some new tries. So you want to generate, I assume we're generating the next four terms with this. So hopefully you'll just stick it straight in your calculator um, to get the sequence out if you want. Let's find the numbers now. Where am I? There. So that's a quarter, two fifths. I'm looking on the wrong thing. Oh, you donkey. I'm reading the ones from the previous example. Uh, I can actually hash, get rid of this and pretend I didn't do it. So, right. Let's get rid of that. I have to see if my, uh, my skills at um, changing it will work. So you want us to... U2 is two fifths, U3 is two over 17. I suspect I'll forget to amend it. So you'll have like the mistake and then it will change it. U4 is two over 53. Uh, and for this one, looking at the right line now, is U1 is minus one. U2 is 14. U3 is minus 46. U4 is one nine four. And then for the last one, so you should be doing these on your calculator by hand or whatever to make sure that you get the right answer. So this one's interesting because U1 and U2 are one and one. And I'm, then I'm adding the, the two together to give the third term. So that would be a one plus one, which is two. And then U4 would be a two plus one, which is three. Right. Must try to remember to edit out where I put the wrong numbers in, but I'll probably not. I'll probably not. Right then, problem solving question. So it says a sequence is given by un plus one is a third k for n is one, and is greater than or equal to one, and u is two. So it gives us the first one. So it says, given that u3 is seven, find the value of k. Right, so this is seven, and this is two. If I put two in, I get seven out. Oh no, I'm not. Let's make more mistakes. I wonder if you can stop this. Put a star. Try to remember to edit it out. Right then, so looking at this question, it said a sequence is given by un plus one is that. So if I put u1 in, it gives me u2. So U2 will be a half K plus three lots of two. So U2 is gonna be a half of K plus six. Now, it doesn't give me any other information about U2, but it does tell me that U3 is seven. So I know if I put a half K plus six in, it'll give me seven out. So U3 will be a half of K plus three lots of U2. There. So if I expand this a little bit, and I've got plenty of room to do this. It's going to squidge me line over. So I'm going to have U3 is a half of, right, so I've got a K plus a 3 over 2K. So that's going to be a 5 over 2K. I've got Three over two times by six, that's going to give me a nine, that was enough. So U3, which we know is seven in a minute, is a half lots of five over two K. So actually, seven. So 
So 14 is going to be 5 over 2k plus 9. Take the 9, so 5 is going to be 5 over 2k. Is that going to give me k is 2? Yeah. There's loads of mistakes in it. Sorry about that. So then find the value k is done. So u4 will be a half 2 plus 3 lots of u3, which we know is 7. Loads of people in an exam will try to rework out what u3 is and can get it wrong. So that's going to be 6, isn't it? No, it's not. Oh, making loads of mistakes. I need to stop. I'm going to stop in a minute. I'm going to stop now, in fact. So 21, 23, 23 over 2. Donkey. Right, I'm stopping now.